So, leak down test. Uh, well, the first thing, what, what is a leak down test? A leak down test is a four stroke test to test the validity of the top end. So, piston rings, the two valves, and if it's passing uh, any gasket, so if you've maybe got a cylinder head gasket that has a bit of a leak, it will show you that as well. And if it's going past the piston rings, we can test that the breather is working as well and it's not blocked. We haven't got any issues there. So to do a leak down test, the first thing we want to bring the piston to top dead center on the compression stroke that closes both of the intake and the exhaust valves. And just bear in mind that you want to set it, if you can't clamp it bang on in one place, like you can't really with a mower blade, I would suggest that you bring it either just before or just after top dead center and then stop it there. So for example, I've gone just after top dead center and I've got a piece of wood holding the mower deck up and the blade is pressing against it. So as I add air through the cylinder, it's going to press against the piston crown and it's just going to uh, press against that piece of wood essentially. Now, if I was at top dead center, it could go either way and it could actually swing the blade back. And if you're putting a lot of pressure in there, it can be extremely violent. We don't want that. We don't want the blade spinning and losing fingers, this, that and the other. So there's two things to negate it. Firstly, go past top dead center or before top dead center and lock it in the position that it will travel if the piston does move. And secondly, we're only applying a small amount of air. Sometimes people apply 100 PSI because it's a round number to work with. I don't do that, it's too much, it's not necessary, and it can be quite violent if something goes wrong. Then, I've taken the air filter off, that's all fine, uh, because we're gonna test that. And lastly, we need, so, leak down test, as I said, it's a four strokes, not two stroke test. Sometimes people call a pressure and a vacuum test a leak down test, it's not, it's not the right terminology. I made this for myself. I actually bought one for 100 bucks. It was junk. Bought one for 300 bucks after that, actually 350 plus postage. It was junk. I decided to make my own and this one works really well. If you want to make one, just have a look on YouTube. There's loads of videos on there. And then I just put down this piece of paper and I just covered it in some tape. Uh, this is how to do a leak down test, essentially. In fact, screenshot that and you can use it. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is fact i've just realized we've got this rocked back um which means that oil is probably going to spill out actually it wasn't very full so it might not let's have a look just no we're okay a little bit a little bit of spillage but that's fine we're gonna leave that cap on for now because we're going to test the breather if uh, anything passes the piston ring so leak down tester pull the knob out turn it anti-clockwise till it stops we're going to add some air in Now we're gonna bring this knob out. We're gonna turn it clockwise this time. We're gonna put air into the first gauge and we're gonna set it to around about 30 PSI. I like 30 because it's low. Uh, it's not gonna cause any violent uh, kind of blade swingings in this case. Uh, it's easy to control and you can still get a really good reading. So we're gonna go to 30 like so. We're pretty much bang on. Hopefully that looks like 30 to you too. About 30 for you guys, yeah. And then we're gonna take the adapter that goes into the spark plug. Oh! And we're gonna plug it in. And we're just gonna see, we want this dial, which is at 30 as well, to drop down to zero. And that one will drop a few PSI, because of course, well, we're not holding at 30, are we? So, in we go. That drops down to zero, take it off. And we wanna double check that this returns to 30. Now it's gone to 32. So let's back it down. And we'll go back to 30. So down we go, then back up. And do the same thing again. And we've gone slightly more, so let's try one more time. Back down we go, add the air back in. Back in we go here, and there we go. We're bang on 30 again. That's where we want to be. Okay, let me just do it one more time for a second. We're bang on. Okay, then what we need to do, hopefully the air compressor doesn't go off, but it might. That's just zeroing the two gauges. We then put the adapter tube in here. We then plug it in, and all this is gonna do is it's gonna pass air through the engine, right? As soon as it levels out, which will take a second or so, we're gonna read the reading on the second gauge. I've got myself a pen ready, and we're gonna jot down the number that it's reading, okay? 
plug it in. So we're reading, where are we? 20, gosh, 28, I'd say 28. Let's write 28 down. Uh, 28. And now we need to find where that two PSI is leaking from. So we have 30 going in, we're at 28. And my favorite method, if you, there's two options, I suppose. I'll sometimes use this, and this is basically just a, a, a stethoscope. You plug the end in, it's got an air attachment, plug those in your ears, and you can have a listen, but that's not gonna help you guys see it. So this is completely drained of petrol. Don't do this if it's not. Uh, grab yourself some incense, or a, a cigarette, or a lit piece of paper. I've just got incense for hand. And we're gonna use this to find out where that leak's coming from. So we'll let that light up. Sorry. Okay, there we go. So we'll start with the exhaust. If it's coming out of the exhaust, it means the exhaust valve is leaking by, possibly by two PSI. We're right by the exhaust and we're not getting anything at all. You can see it's just traveling straight up. Let's now check around where the spark plug adapter goes in. And again, there's no movement of that air, so we know that that's good too. Can you see if I zoom you in? Yeah, you can. All right, let's go back here. You can see it's not moving the smoke. Now the intake, There is a little bit of air coming out of the intake, actually. So that could be coming through the intake valve, or in this case, you can see there's a tube here. It's the breather tube, which is actually here. Uh, so the, the best way to do this, now bear in mind, you may spill some oil doing this, is to undo the oil filler cap and see if air is coming out of that. Then we know that the issue is not the valve and instead it's just passing the piston rings. It's going through the breather and then out the intake area. Let me just tap this ash off. My tin gone up there. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Ready? You can come with me. If I stick this, can you see how if I put it in there, it's blowing out? So that could be either intake valve, or it could also be. Sorry, guys. I just put you back in the tripod, and I. Oh, here we go. I put you back in the tripod and uh, I accidentally cut you out. I've just shown you the intake uh, is leaking, or at least there's air coming out of this area. You can't even feel it, it's so gentle. It is only two PSI that's coming out, not surprising. So let's go and take off the oil filler cap. And if it's coming out of there, it means that the intake is fine and that it's actually passing the rings. So let me wait for that compressor. Okay. It could be blowing oil out here, so just bet the air. It's, have a look at this. You can hear it now. Tap the ash off. Watch this. It should come. Uh, there you go. So we are losing two PSI through or past the piston rings. And actually, we know the intake is not the issue. The intake valve is actually just coming out of the uh, crankcase breather tube. So that's really good to know. The last thing we can do is... Um, double check around places like gaskets if i had a cylinder head gasket i could test it and do the same thing but uh, we know we've only got two two psi leaks so let's carry on and do the equation to find out what that is in percentage of leak down and we'll go from there right let me get you set back up hold tight all right i did this off camera because i needed the calculator on my ca my phone's camera <laughs> what I needed the calculator on my phone and I'm filming it with the camera. All right, so this is the equation. If you took a screenshot earlier, you'll see, but I'm gonna read you through it. So you start off with the original value we set on the leak down tester, which we went to 30 PSI. We then minus that from the other dial, which is basically reading how much uh, air is leaking. And we got 28. That means that we've got 2% or, or two PSI difference between the two values of leak down. That doesn't mean anything just yet. We then take that number and divide it by the original number to give us 0 
and then we times that number by 100 to give us our percentage. Now, if you were to just put 100 PSI in, it's so easy. But because we went with 30 PSI, we had to do this bit of an equation because we didn't want to put so much air into the uh, cylinder. You can cause yourself some issues. We have 7% leak down test, and that 7% is going past the rings. The valves are both sealing good. We know that they're uh, set correctly as well. So that's really good to know. Now, what does that 7% actually mean? Here is the piece of paper that I had you guys screenshot earlier. Uh, there's the equation. And then what we have here is what uh, is considered good, bad, blah, blah, blah. We are between six and 14. This is good and it's standard leak range for most engines. Every engine's gonna leak, okay? But uh, in this case, we're really good. There's a very small amount of leak there. We are what I'd consider good between six and 14%. In fact, we're very much on the edge of excellent in this case.